Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and today we're going to be building a very capable high-density network for a future kind of downtown inner city area for our New England build of Newmarket. Sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy the build. This is the location of our new high-density development. So up in this corner, we have Old Town Newmarket, the city that we've been building thus far. I'd like to establish a connection into kind of a larger arterial network that lives in this area. And I'd also like to establish two highway connections. So give or take here, somewhere in this in this stretch, and somewhere down here also, maybe, maybe right at the end of that corner. I'd like to have a really strong arterial road network that, that links to the highway and expect some high density buildings in this area. I just wanna prepare for that today. For the highway connections, it's almost certainly gonna be a trumpet interchange like I said, we're going to use here and here as connection points to the highway using trumpets. I just want to see exactly where that ends up. So I'm using this big urban roads 3 plus 3 as an arterial. And maybe let's assume it comes in and aims for this spot. That's what I imagine because it's going to split left and it's going to split right. So it aims for that spot. So I'm going to establish one straight road here, and this will be the beginning of this, this trumpet interchange. You just got to pick a spot. <laughs> it's got to happen. Um, oftentimes trumpets will connect to highways, so you can use it as a system interchange to connect the highway to, to another highway, but you can see here we're going to be turning it into an arterial road instead. We're going to be sort of downgrading it in a sense. Now I imagine it looping. Hmm. I suppose I imagine it looping left. Let me think about it for a second. And now we fast forward 24 very brief hours later. It is the next day at this point. We've got two trumpet interchanges. They're all detailed, they're all marked up. They've got realistic splits and merges. If you get the right road networks, you can do this. These are gonna be linked in the description. Um, in the collection within the description. But if you get the right networks, you can do these awesome splits if you're willing to take the time to mark it up with intersection marking tool. Typically a trumpet interchange, both of these are called trumpet interchanges. It's a three-way highway interchange and you can use it one of two ways. You can either connect a highway to it or you can connect an arterial road. An arterial meaning the next step down from a highway. So for example, the three-way intersection, the stock vanilla, three-way intersection ends with a highway. You can see on that third side, we're going to end up deleting this, but just to illustrate, this is a highway connection on the end with highway, with through highway on the other sides. Imagine if you modified this to instead turn into a six lane arterial road or a four lane arterial road. This is a way to bring an arterial into the city without running a highway through your whole city. So we're, we're modifying the trumpets to be a service interchange, which means it's a way on and off the highway rather than a way to continue the highway. If you watched my previous video, we discussed how to start a city and how to, um, multiple ways to start a city. One of those ways was to bring the highway in and another one was to modify the interchange to bring an arterial in, making it a service interchange. The reason that, that that's important and the distinction there is the speed and level of sound coming off a highway is could be unbearable or would almost certainly lower land value in certain situations. It's very popular in some places for this to happen, but I generally, I, I nowadays I really try to play in such a way that shies away from that sort of thing. So I think it's better, I think it's better for the Sims because I care about their feelings so much to bring an arterial in rather than a, a full on highway. So we're gonna establish a network here. This is still Newmarket. This is still my New England city that we're working on, but we're just on the high density side of things. And I'm just gonna grow these two roads knowing that this road is eventually going to split this way and this way. This road is going to split to connect to this one and somewhere over here. So I have kind of a vague idea of where this is going. And we're just gonna sketch it out. 
This is really a video about road hierarchy at the end of the day, because that's what will make your your city's uh, high density areas work or not, is your level of, of awareness of road hierarchy. So we've already begun by going from highway to arterial. That is step one in road hierarchy, if you're going from big, bigger to smaller. The next step down would be a collector road. We're not going to put in collector roads for a little bit because I want to establish this this uh, arterial network first. Another thing to note about this is these are roads as opposed to streets. I didn't know the distinction between the two for a very long time, for a very, very long time, actually. I had no idea. The difference is a road is for moving traffic. This is a, this is a six lane road with no parking on the side. If you're driving on this, it's all business. You are, go and by all business, I mean no business. There should be no businesses on the side of this road. You should be moving vehicles using this road. This is a way to get to and from the highway. That's it. That's it. I'm going to uh, defy my US roots by, by saying this. But yeah, this is a, this is absolutely a, a means to an end is what a road is. Whereas a street is a place for hanging out and, and commerce. It's a place for businesses to set up shop and and also uh, people to hang out, things like that. That looks really good. I've aimed that right at the destination where we want to eventually have a hookup with Old Town New Market there. Nice, I'm liking that split. This road is also going to have a split that connects here, probably. Another hallmark of these, these types of roads, another hallmark of of uh, road hierarchy is access. So you'll notice that this town has one, two, three, four highway interchanges. I think that's probably going to be it, at least for now, for the foreseeable future, until this area has grown. Those four interchanges are going to be the only ways on and off the highway. Arterial roads will have slightly more access, so they'll be they'll have a slightly heavier... Uh, a slightly larger number of, of crossings and intersections and things like that. And that's fine. That's, that's not a problem at all. The next step down is collector roads, and collector roads have even more intersections. So the access goes up. As the, as the mobility of the road goes down, the access goes up. You can afford to have more inter intersections. I'm not going to cover the highway and intersections, just to be clear. That's not part of the, uh, that's not part of the deal. Let's see where this goes, if it just goes straight into the distance. I think that we're going to see the, the high density network emerge or the high density spots emerge as this happens. Where does this hit? Should this be a 90? This is just going to be a 90. Yeah, this is almost a 90 as it is. So if we 90 it and then go back to here, not bad. Then we can modify this curve. I'm all about trial and error with this type of thing. Kind of sketch out what you want, and as you as you learn more and more about what you're building, you'll have a better sense of what you want to make. So right about there, we can use the curved road tool to make a, a perfect curve here. Doesn't have to be completely perfect, but should be close. 179.2, 179.7. This truly does not need to be this, this close. But I want it. <laughs> I want it. Ah! There's actually no guarantee that there is a perfect angle here. Nothing is guaranteed at the end of the day. I might be able to use freeform road tool and just kind of laugh it off. There we go. There we go. There it is. So we'll do that and then continue this road straight a little bit and it'll be very close to 180 degrees. That looks real good. Real good. I like that. This road will probably continue on and connect over here also. I want this to represent a split as well. I don't know what the split is for yet. I don't know what these what these arterial sections are for, but I know that the places 
with the most intersections are going to be the densest areas, probably. I would expect. I'm not sure about that one. Let's see where this one goes. This one's going to... I presume this one goes down around here to this covered bridge. We still have a covered bridge in the city. I just haven't. We just don't talk about it. It's undeveloped. So we'll do a straight road right down here. And this is a little, a little too perfect almost, but it's okay. It's going to look very nice because of that. And freeform road tool is your friend. Ooh, parallel to the train tracks, parallel ish, parallelogram. Straight for a few units. That's good, and then we'll curve it. This road may get downgraded to something slightly smaller depending on what happens, but I think that this is a real strong start at least. And then it connects somewhere up here. That's okay. That connection's pretty uh, terrible <laughs> if you look at what it is. Zero lane math. But it's all part of the sketching out process. That actually looks pretty good for an arterial network. The one the one or two missing connections would be here if we wanted to bypass the central big intersection area. If we wanted to bypass that, that would be okay. And maybe another arterial coming off here or something like that. Let me explore that and see what happens. So far, I think that's coming along pretty nicely. You'll notice that I'm a pretty big fan of a, a triangle shape when it comes to a lot of things. The triangle means that this traffic on this road doesn't have to go all the way up here and make a right to get to this point. So every time you kind of make an extra triangle, you're saving another intersection. Or it might mean that they don't have to go through one, two lights to get to this point. Uh, a couple things that I'm imagining in the future. I know I said that these are probably the only two highway interchanges, but I think it would make a lot of sense just looking at the geography of the map, it seems like this would be a nice space to, to bring an arterial through. So I kind of staged that here. This would be where that arterial comes from and comes down and then connects here. I'm not going to build that today because it's not really necessary because there's nothing here yet. But I wanted to point that out. In this moment, let's let's grab our our road for this area and just try to integrate it with this. I may even end up downgrading this entire road for the time being. Part of the the concept that I'm going with on this map is going to be least amount of necessary force. And when I say that, I mean not bringing the highway in is, is part of that. Because usually bringing the highway in can be overkill. I think you'll find. And really, the highway is already brought in. I, I think... This often gets lost in the shuffle, but the highway is already in your city, or in my city at least. This is the highway coming up and around. That's already that's already a major highway network on the map. I don't need to expand that highway network, really. If you want to do it, it's okay. Like, if you want to build a lot of highways and go big, I no one appreciates that more than me. But also, a little discretion with it is not a bad thing, necessarily. You might find you like it. So I'm going to roughly end that and then make a curve here. There we go. Looks pretty sharp. I think that's a somewhat realistic scenario, except for the f except for what it is. Other than that, it's realistic. Let's bring this all the way back. Uh, with the particular network that I'm using, I do have to... This is a quirk just for this network. You're not going to have to remember this unless you're using the big urban roads. But I'm adding a custom timed traffic light. And by that, I mean a stock timed traffic light. I'm clicking it, hitting the uh, timed traffic light button in Traffic Manager and Control clicking the intersection. And that will make it happen. Sometimes I'll even modify this because this is a four-way... Well, actually, no. Three, three lanes is fine. We have the option in the future to upgrade these to four. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But a little node controller goes a long way. Maybe we'll increase this to 25. I think 25 looks really nice for these 
big intersections, big American intersections. I did that to this one as well. It's a three-way intersection, but you can see how the how the arrows work out. Where two, the the way that the two arrows go is the priority direction, priority, priority. Like that's all. Um, ooh, I might even change this one so the middle lane goes right here because I think that'll be the more popular option. But just to show you what we're what we're doing, here's a four-way intersection. I'm going to add a traffic light. Actually, first, let's upgrade the roads. This one, at least coming from the highway, this is going to be a major intersection. A lot of traffic is going to be coming from all directions. Let's say this is a suburban section here. Before we hit the downtown area, there might be some outskirts suburban in between the city and the highway. That would be a very plausible move. What if we increased capacity coming off the highway in, in plans for that kind of thing? So this is a 3 plus 3 road that we've been using. If I go asymmetrical and do 3 plus 4, or 4 plus 3, I'm not, I'm not sure of the, <laughs> the exact values. I think, that's, I think that's fair. Or we could even go further back if we want. Like, that's not bad. So we're using an asymmetrical road, so it increases to 4 lanes. And I'm going to do that on every side, just to just to plan for all these left-hand turns that are going to be happening. And maybe I won't go any specific amount, and this may change later, but four lanes, uh, that's probably too many. Here, not the lanes, but the, the amount of space. That is enough space. If traffic gets backed up past here, then that would be nuts. But we'll plan for that. We'll plan for something like that, just in case. Crazy thing, in the last video, a lot of people swore that roundabouts can't get backed up. They absolutely can. And a turbo roundabout is really good, but uh, traffic engineers seem to agree. Roundabouts are safer, but a traffic light, hot take, it's not even a take really, it's, it's um, mathematical. A lighted intersection will pass more traffic than a roundabout. In the U.S. at least, we never we have more cars than, than anywhere probably on the road, I would say, just culturally. And on a major route, so anything just sub-highway, so major arterial roads, it'll be a four-way intersection with uh, a lot of turn lanes, essentially. Not that that makes it a good thing. It's not as safe, it's not as clean, it's not as pretty, it's harder to maintain. There's all kinds of reasons to use a roundabout instead. But lights can pass incredible amounts of traffic even when compared to a roundabout. You make of that what you want. You can you can do whatever you'd like in, in your city. But there we go, that's pretty good. Eventually I might modify it if we decide, if I notice that a lot of traffic is turning left, I may even add an extra lane and put in a second turn lane or just modify this so that this becomes a left turn as well. It, it really depends where traffic is going from this interchange, and I won't know until we, we do it. <laughs> I won't know until it's completed. But yeah, that's just the vanilla traffic light. If I was going to go ham on this and really do it up nice, I might turn off the intersection markings and get rid of those vanilla crosswalks. The crosswalks built into the network are generally not that good. And then intersection marking tool, shift click to make some very good looking custom crossings. And I'm just using the stock crossing all over. What? What? I might, there might be something wrong with this angle. Or I might need to node control it a little differently. Hmm. Very interesting. Let's do some live troubleshooting and see what happened there. This was just supposed to be a, a quick snippet. Crosswalks, zebra. I can, I can change this and it'll fix it probably. No, delete it, try it again. Still nothing, I'll figure it out later, that's okay. But that is a common sight after you get off the highway in the US. You pick your lane, plenty of time to pick your lane generally if it's well planned, but you pick your lane, you're coming into the city, make sure you're on the left or right side depending on where you're going, check your GPS, or if you're going straight, be in the middle, wait for the light to change, and you're off. A three-way interchange is a little bit quicker, of course. One less cycle, presumably. What I foresee here would be some sort of some sort of suburban area. So maybe let's plan for that. Let's downgrade a road 
So let's go down a level, essentially. This is the this is a 2 plus 3 road that we're going to be using instead. And it has a slower speed. But following road hierarchy, we're going to go down from the collector... Excuse me, we're going to go down from an arterial system down to a collector road. And this is a good spot to... to um, this is a good spot to add this, I feel. Let's just do 20 units for now. Sure. And I'm going to turn one of these the opposite way. So there's extra turn lanes. And I think that these lefts, what this is actually denoting is one is a hard left. The other one is this left. I believe this angle is counting as a left for this road. So the center lane is going to go that way. And the right is a right. And that's obvious. Let's do the same thing down here just to mark it. Just a little collector road to mark where it's going to go eventually. And in this case, I'm probably going to do a cut through of some sort for these cars if they want to, if they want to go straight across, just kind of make another mini triangle within the triangle. But that's a good marking there. And I imagine this guy probably comes around and connects but I also imagine a road splitting off here and coming down, and then they both connect. Let's make that happen right now, actually. Let's do this. So we're gonna do a smaller, it's still the big urban roads pack, but it's just this smaller type of road. And I imagine it's splitting off here. And I'm gonna look at the river for this. 25 degrees, that is fine. It's a bit of a crazy right turn, but I don't expect much traffic is going to come up this way to make this right. That's probably not going to be the norm, depending on what goes in this area. And this is just maybe an older road that followed the river a bit more closely. That's nice. And then a straightaway... Looking at the river still. The straightaway can go right in front of this thing here, and that's going to determine where it splits to go down here, I think. So let's connect this up, get the arterial. It's a bit of a break in road hierarchy with this road, but I don't think that this... I, I think contextually it makes sense since this is relatively low density compared to what this area is probably going to be. And freeform road tools, still looking at the river. I like the shape of that. Very close. Uh, let's... Maybe we go up a little bit and then connect it here. Or maybe not. That's actually really good. Cool. Not bad at all. That makes me want to have this traffic break off to like a real riverfront situation. But then also another connection here, riverfront. I can, I can sort of see this taking shape. It's actually only just occurred to me that this high density area is going to be the macrocosm of this microcosm. So this is kind of the miniature version of what's going to happen over here. And I think that's kind of cool. I think we'll have the small town. I might have to use some creative uh, policies to stop traffic from using this area to get to the highway. We'll, we'll do that in a later episode. But for now, I'd like to finish off this high density arterial with a low density suburban area just to show you how we're going from arterial to collector or maybe even in the context of this this might be considered the collector but really it doesn't matter it's all just words used to understand a concept i imagine that this would probably be a shopping center or maybe a park i don't know yet but i'm going to be using smaller roads to make a bit of a grid system here. And by a bit of a grid, I mean an entirely gridded area. 40 units back. Perhaps the grid goes this way so we can avoid too many intersections on this road because this would be an extension of the collector, I suppose. 
Uh, but yeah, that's just something to imagine there. Another clever thing that I'd like to do is this particular network allows for what are called R-cut junctions. I don't know if it'll be an R-cut, but we'll use this median over here to our advantage. So vehicles from the highway are going to be allowed to turn right at some point. We'll see where that point is in just a moment. All right, imagining that this road continues on doing its thing. Maybe to about there. This one should be similar, probably. Let's see the road guideline. Hmm. It's all subject to change, but just sketching this out a little bit. Now imagine this road came off here. So let's make this... Uh, not 90 degrees. What would this be? 135, I suppose? Yeah, 135. Okay. So at 135 degrees there, perhaps this one connects here. Yes. Very good. But also imagine, so the, the main point of this is so traffic from the highway can come off here and then make a right turn into their neighborhood and not clog up this entire area. But with that, I would have to manually determine that. So this one is maybe... That is totally fine. I don't want this lane turning left is the main point. I don't think they can. <laughs> I don't think they have a choice. I think that they're going straight no matter what. As long as I don't put a light here, that median will remain. Because I don't want traffic crossing over. This is just a way for the, for the highway to get into their neighborhood. I think that's great. Um, continuing the grid. Let's do the same thing here, actually. Let's do that 135 degree angle, because I think it'll look good. It's going to look like a, a three-dimensional kind of box, almost. What's the opposite of 135? I guess it would be... Or 135, rather. I suppose it would be this here. A 45 degree angle. Yes, that makes sense. The math all adds up. <laughs> and I'm just going to go until it's done. And in theory, this is 90 degrees. Yes, it is. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And if this ends here, then we'll do that. And of course, the grid is totally busted at this point, but that's okay. Angled roads will do that. Normal, normal stuff. And following along. <laughs> I would love for this to be parallel to that other road. Ooh, I think I've done it. Though it doesn't actually have to be. Let's think. I think that the, the blocks are going to go this way for this area. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Here, let's actually draw this backwards and see if that fixes the grid at all. It may. It absolutely does not. <laughs> it's okay. The grid is going to be broken in some spots, and that's that's life. So this way... That'll happen there. Ah, interesting. That changes my mind about this. Let's make this one unit further. Even though it's a grid, you can still be creative with it. There's no lack of creativity, I don't think. There we are. And that may even save the grid over here. It does. It does. Beautiful. These are probably going to be a bit borked, but that's okay. It's not too bad. There's probably a spot in the middle here. Where's the midway point of this whole operation? Well, you get the drift. I would just end up sketching this out and continuing to build the grid. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. And here's what I came up with. It's a bit of a grid, obviously. 10 units by 30 units for most of them, which is kind of an uh, elongated grid, I'd say. But some interesting points are where it curves to meet this other part of the grid. And also these entrances and exits. I didn't want to rely solely on these two connections for this whole area. Uh, so I figured this would be a nice touch. 
allowing them to come in and out here, but not being allowed to cross the median. So the road hierarchy doesn't break down here because they're not able to go left. Same with the other side, actually. I decided to make a an access from this angle if they want to come in from the major road this way because they live on this side of it, or if it's better for them to come in through the middle two entrances, whatever's good. And this median is not permeable, once again, so they can make a right out of here if they want to. But yeah, that's about it. That's kind of the my approach to road hierarchy. It's getting dark in game. My approach to road hierarchy um, as shown for this high density area. So eventually there's going to be very big buildings in the middle that are going to need some... Uh, they're going to require these large roads and they'll be surrounded by low density things. You know, low density uh, American homes, probably the American Eclectic Pack. But that is going to do it for this, for this little section of the build. Um, I've been Yumble. I appreciate you hanging out. Uh, I also stream twice a week on Twitch, so definitely subscribe here, but also feel free to follow on Twitch if you want to catch a stream or two every week. Um, I also have disc uh, a Discord server where we talk cities and uh, mods and tra traffic help, things like that. Uh, but everybody, I really appreciate it. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.